This video is about feedback. How can we leave incredible feedback for our students and why it's important to focus on that feedback. In a face-to-face -face class, you're constantly providing feedback. You're interacting with the students. You're asking questions. They're asking questions of you. There is a level of, of discussion that allows the feedback to, to be ongoing. This is not true in an online environment. So, what type of feedback do we have in an online environment? Well, there are two types of feedback. One is formative, and that basically explains to the students what they did wrong. It allows them to look deeper for a level of understanding, and it also allows them to do some self-analysis of the topic they're working on. Typically, Formative feedback is really good for a rough draft, for a project check-in, so the students can then go back and correct before they receive the final grade. Summative feedback is just that. It's their final grade. It results in a your decision you have to make. Did they accomplish the task? Could they do the performance objective? Now, that doesn't mean that even if, if it's a final grade, it doesn't also have some formative information because then maybe they realize what they need to do for the next paper, for example. Inside D2L, there are many ways to leave feedback. Today, we're going to focus on leading feedback with grades and inside the Dropbox. You can also leave feedback for discussions, but we're really going to focus just on these two items. All right, so let's talk about where we can do it inside of grades. Notice, if you take and you go and you look at your student's grades and you say you want to grade a topic, not only can you type the grade in, so here is where you would type in 18 out of 20 or whatever they got, then you have this icon here that allows you to give feedback. When you click on that icon, this is what would come up. So we graded, let's say, a short essay that the students have worked on, and now we want to go ahead and we want to give them some feedback. And so we can tell them, let's say they had um, excellent organization. All right, but they need to work on their spelling. So tell them. Spelling needs to be edited. All right, they, that's something for them to work on in order for them to continue to improve. As the instructor, right, you hit save here, and then they are able then to go ahead and they will see this feedback. The second feedback box is for you to then, anyone who grades the activity. So if you're working in conjunction with another instructor or you have um, maybe a supplemental um, a st instructor or a learning assistant, then they can work. Um, that's where you would leave comments would be in here. The other place it's really common to leave feedback is using the Dropbox. So this is a Dropbox assignment. This is typically done by the student named the gray box. Um, this is actually an active class of mine, which is why I um, gray boxed out his name. But what happens is when you enter the Dropbox and you start evaluating the submissions, this here is an Excel file. So you would download the cell file and see what it looks like, and then you could leave feedback for the students, including tell the student, um, let's say that um, nice column set up, but they need to label their equations. All right, in addition, there's something else I want to point out, the feedback that you can do inside D2L is right here, you can record audio. So if you want to leave a comment to the students, you can easily do that, hit record audio, and then while you're looking at it, you can talk to them about what they're seeing, what you're seeing in the paper, and leave feedback that way. So what is good feedback? Let's talk about the best teaching practices for feedback. You need to use feedback so students know how they can improve and how they can then grow. 
provide detailed and specific feedback and make it very personal. If you constantly leave feedback like, nice job, that doesn't mean anything to the students. But leaving feedback like, great organization, that means something to them. Then they know what skills they have as well as what skills they need to work on. Now there are some creative ways we can use feedback. One is the voice recorder you can do inside D2L and that was what we just pointed out on where you would push that button. You would need a mic then to be able to record it. The other is you can use a screen capture program similar to this. You could actually bring the students work up and then talk to the student about what you're seeing in the paper or what you're seeing on their Excel file or in their work and provide feedback that way and then you would send them a video. There are multiple screen capture programs that are very easy to use. ScreenChomp is one of them. Screencast is another one. This program is being done with Camtasia and it's a little more robust. So that completes how and good practices to provide feedback inside of D2L.